Okay, now we're going to talk about Homo erectus, one stage up from Homo habilis. These guys have a much larger brain case. It's really nearing the size of ours. It's almost doubled again. It's, it's up to a thousand cc's now, on average. Here we have several individuals, each one their own person. But what I want you to look at are the things that are in common with these. If you look, all of them have a very heavy brow ridge. Do you see this huge brow ridge? They've also got a much larger brain than anything we've met before. This is huge compared to everybody we've met before, but still with this big brow ridge. The only one who's missing their brow ridge is this guy here. This is Neri Katomi boy. But you can see where it was. You can see the beginning of it and the end of it. You simply put those together in your mind and you've got a big forward-facing brow ridge. Huge wide no nasal apertures. Big wide noses. Big brow ridges. Not quite as large a brain case as Neanderthals we'll meet in a minute. But the first thing to pay attention to here is this is Homo erectus, the largest brain that we've met thus far. The things to keep in mind here to look at. Homo erectus always has this sort of point on the top of the head. This is harder to see when you're looking at it in two dimensions. In three dimensions, it's very easy to see. Let me hold his, see that little point right here, that nub at the very top of his head. It's kind of like a little, like this part of the head. Let me get this lined up for you. You see how this part of the head and this part of the head, and then you have this numb here, this kind of keel that goes down the length of the sagittal suture. Well, sure enough, that's what they call it. They call it a sagittal keel because somebody thought this looks like the bottom of a boat. Can you see that? How it slides in like this, slides in like that, and then there's this sort of sharp mohawk down the middle. Now, not to be confused with a sagittal crest that we met with Paranthropus, now we're seeing just a keel because these guys have much smaller chewing muscles, smaller mouths, but big brain cases. So these three individuals, I've given you ideas of how to recognize each one of these. I'll give you a couple more. This guy, to me, looks, again, kind of like caramel ice cream. You've got your vanilla ice cream here, which is the reconstruction, and then this caramel swirl here. But the main thing is that huge brow ridge that you see, okay? This guy here, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You could you could see these two things. When I was uh, earlier on, there was a famous singer named Seal who had scars going down his nasolabial folds in this area here, and I just sort of likened that to him. But yeah, do whatever you want. I don't have any really great one for him. And then Neri could tell me, boy, the part who's also Homo erectus. The big thing, the big giveaway here is that huge missing brow ridge there. The big break right there. And that huge wide nose. Look at how wide that nose is. Really big nasal aperture. But we're not quite done with Homo erectus yet. The next two are specialized. So they have a different name. But they're still in the family of Homo erectus. They're just a little different. This individual is named Demonisi. No Homo because he's considered Homo erectus. You can still see that big lump on top, this, this nub on the top of his head. But this one's special. The reason I consider him special, Demonisi, the name comes from where he was found. He was found in Demonisi, Georgia, meaning the Republic of Georgia, not the state of Georgia, just to clarify. But Demonisi, which if you sound out that name, Demon, E-C, sounds like he's a demon, also has a nickname, and it's based on this do you see how his canines here and here and the, his all four of his front incisors have been broken away and so his canines poke way out here. So they started calling this the vampire skull. Another thing which if you can see if the light is just right, it's got kind of that greenish hue to it. 
To me, it looks like a glow-in-the-dark skull <laughs> from, like, Halloween. So those canine teeth sticking out like that because the other teeth are missing. The other ones would look like this if we broke out all four of their front teeth, too. This is a Homo erectus, usually, but we consider it Demonisi because of where it was found being kind of an original area. And for a while, they thought this guy might be different. So the best way to remember this is the coloration, this kind of greenish hue, or this light, I don't know, hue to it. The sticking out canine teeth that make him look like a vampire. That should remind you, vampires are considered, especially in Eastern Europe, a demon. Demon EC. Okay? Last and least, if you consider how tiny she is, little tiny, little lady here. This is Homo floresiensis. Homo floresiensis, if you'll remember, if you had me for 101, you'll know I went into a big deal about Homo floresiensis. She's important because she changed everything as far as the way we rate things, what we thought prior to the discovery, and how science works. But still, if you look, Look at that, top of her head. There is a big hole here, but right there, look at that nub, just like the rest of the Homo erectus. She's got a relatively high forehead, but she's got that keel going on right up here, that nub in the top of her head. Let me see if I can get it lined up right. See it? Whoomp. Whoomp. It's like the roof of a house. So she does fall into the category of Homo erectus. She looks just like him. The difference is she's tiny. Look at how small she is. Teensy, tiny little thing. Now again, in our face-to-face -face classes, this is much easier because you can see it. You can see this from across the room, how tiny she is, and you can see that she's got this big old brain case and that sagittal keel, so that all tells you, hey, she, and the big brow ridge, by the way, she is Homo erectus, but she's not Australopithecus because her brain is too big. But because she's so super small, we call her something special. Homo floresiensis. The other reason is she was a very late surviving Homo erectus, which is very interesting. But if you look at that head shape, boy, it is exactly like Demonisi. It is exactly like the other three boys we met earlier, Homo erectus. 